Hey guys, welcome to episode number 24 of Ask Jungle Scout. Today we've got some awesome questions coming up. As always, remember to leave your question in the comment section below this video for a chance to have an answer. Also keep in mind at the end of today's episode, I'm gonna share with you one tool to help optimize your listing. So make sure you tune in at the end for that one. Let's get to the first question. Vidya asks, Payoneer or World First, which is best? For those of you that have followed the show, I have spoken about Payoneer and World First before. I've mentioned them both as services that I've used in the past. Now Vidya mentioned in another comment that she's not able to get World First in her country, so I would absolutely recommend Payoneer. Both allow you to receive Amazon payments in US dollars without having to have a US dollar account. What I like about Payoneer is that it includes a debit card. So anything that requires a credit card purchase, things like Jungle Scout or other software and services, you can actually use a card. Uh, World First doesn't have that, but what I do like about World First is that the fees tend to be a little bit lower. I haven't used Payoneer recently, but what they always do is that they take out 1% uh, of any uh, money that comes in, whereas World First didn't do that. So I'd often use World First to pay my suppliers, because you can basically do like a wire transfer um, from World First, whereas Payoneer, um, because it takes that little bit extra out, um, I still use it, I still put money into my Payoneer account, and then I just use that for my credit card purchases. However, if you don't have access to World First, I'd highly recommend Payoneer. Um, I just logged on recently, I haven't used it as much, but it seems like they're adding a lot of features, so I definitely still highly recommend Payoneer. Sean asks, if a product or a brand is shipped and sold by Amazon, is it a bad idea to private label the same product even if I can make it cheaper and better? Reviews are bad, but selling a lot according to the Jungle Scout product database. Should I not try competing with Amazon? That's a great question, Sean. Now, there are a lot of people that do feel a little bit wary about selling against Amazon, and I totally get that. However, we feel that it's not necessarily that bad of a thing. You see, uh, a lot of the time, Amazon will just, you know, launch a lot of products and essentially just set and forget them. It's a lot different to FBA sellers or FBM sellers who are in there checking their competition, you know, um, trying to go into price wars or trying to be competitive, uh, essentially. You know, when you're going up against Amazon, they're not going to do that. They're not gonna be checking your listing and, you know, you're never gonna get sabotaged by Amazon trying to, you know, put bad reviews on your listing or anything like that. So when you look at it from that perspective, in some ways it's actually potentially like an advantage selling up against Amazon. We've heard from Amazon staff that they don't favor their products any more so than those from you know, an FBA or an FBM seller. So I don't see any reason to not sell up against Amazon. Max asks, I recently watched the first video of your Jungle Scout million dollar case study. It was absolutely fantastic and super helpful, though I'm confused over one thing. When you guys said to avoid brand allegiance areas, does that include areas where there seems to be a main seller selling lots of variations of your product? Or is it just avoid areas with the big names like clothing with Nike or baby nappies with Pampers? Thanks for the question, Max. So when we talk about avoiding products that have high brand allegiance, we're talking about those products where people are less likely to buy from a third party or a no-name brand. You know, you do see that a lot in clothing. People like to wear certain brands like Nike or Under Armour or that type of thing. Think of the shopping habits of yourself and of people you know. Are there products that you would only buy from a particular brand? You know, think of phones and Apple. You know, there are a lot of people that are hardcore Apple fans that will only buy from that brand. So going into that market would be quite difficult because there's such great uh, brand loyalty to Apple and to Samsung and these particular brands. When you're looking at products on Amazon, it's usually fairly apparent when there's a brand that's dominating a lot of the sales. So when you're looking at, say, the top 10 listings, if you see that one or two listings um, are taking most of the sales and there's not as many spread out amongst the other eight or the remaining listings, then that might be a sign that that particular listing or that brand uh, might be holding brand allegiance. So when doing product research, always watch out for brand allegiance, uh, but I hope that helps. John and Evans Fishing Adventures asks, when doing a launch, how many units do you recommend giving away and for how many days? I've heard to take the average number of units sold per day on page one and give that number of units away. Is that right? If so, for how many days? 
On a recent session of the Million Dollar Case Study, Greg actually shares his launch strategy, which we used for the Jungle Snugs, our baby hooded towels. And that was very much along the lines of what you're saying, John, uh, by looking at the top listings on your main keyword, seeing how many sales per day they are doing, and imitating that number of sales. It makes a lot of sense that if you want to be in the top 10 uh, listings under that particular keyword, you would need to be matching the number of sales that they are doing in order to be there. Now, the length of time that you run this promotion for will vary a lot. However, I'll give you some broad numbers just as a guideline and a starting point, because I think it's important to keep this in mind when you're planning your first order, because you will need to allocate um, some units to go towards giveaways, and you probably you know, um, will lose a little bit of money on this giveaway, but it's a necessary step to launch your product. So I would recommend starting with between five to 10 units per day at a discount of somewhere between 50 to 80% off, and I would run this for maybe one to two weeks. Again, the length of time will vary. Um, it depends, you know, how quickly uh, some re reviews start coming in. Uh, it depends how competitive your niche is. Um, but really, you just essentially just need to rinse and repeat this process until you start to get some natural organic sales. But I hope those numbers give you at least a, a bit of a starting point for how many to give away. Sanj just has two questions. Number one, now that Amazon is asking for product numbers instead of UPC codes, does suppliers provide us with a PN, a product number? If yes, does the product number change for our own product since that product is already existed with a product number before? So what I think Sargis is referring to here is that when you get brand registry, what you'd likely want to do is change your product from uh, being attached to a UPC code to what's called a model number. Now firstly, to clarify, um, Amazon is, is not exactly asking for a product number. They still ask for a UPC code when you set up your listing, unless you get uh, a GTIN exemption. Now there's a link below to another uh, past episode where I talked about this in more detail. However, what you need to know is that uh, if you get brand registry, you can change your unique identifier over to a model number. Now, as you are the manufacturer of your product, you can actually create the model number yourself. So you go into the back end of your listing and you can actually put in whatever you want the model number to be. So you can actually create and designate that one yourself. The second question from Sargis is, what's the latest strategy for getting customer reviews? So really the strategy hasn't changed. You still need to get sales happening because the more sales that you get, the more reviews you will get inevitably. So that involves things like running promotional giveaways, and then running PPC campaigns also to drive more sales, and then making sure you have automated email campaigns running, following up your customers with emails to increase the likelihood of receiving reviews. So all those things still work, um, and that's still the best strategy moving forward. So that's all the questions for today, guys. Now I just wanted to share my tip of the week, and it's a free tool that we actually offer called the Product Listing Grader. So you can just put in your ASIN and it will instantly give you a breakdown of how well optimized your listing is. We spend all this time and money and effort driving people to our listing, but then it's super important to make sure our listing is as optimized as possible to increase the chances that people will click add to cart and actually purchase your product. So once you put in your ASIN and an email address, it'll give you a detailed breakdown of how your listing, uh, how well optimized it is, and also some suggestions on how to improve it. So I highly recommend checking out this link here to access it. Once you put in your ASIN and your email address, it'll give you a detailed breakdown of how well optimized your listing is, and then some suggestions on what you can do to improve it. So I highly recommend checking out that one to optimize your listing below. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to give us a big thumbs up if you got some value from today. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got some great content coming out all the time. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'll see you next episode.